Agents and stakeholders from the Caribbean, Middle East, Eastern Europe, USA, and Canada who are involved in the Citizenship by Investment program are in Grenada discussing the resilience of the CBI sector. Host Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell and his counterpart from Dominica, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, as well as other local government officials are looking at the future of the sector at the Radisson Resort under the theme, Strengthening the Adaptability and Sustainability of the Caribbean Investment Migration. Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell spoke to the importance of investment migration and its financial con contribution to the Caribbean economies in which it is undertaken. He says it is important to openly acknowledge that there are some challenges to the CBI program, one being potential security risks. Our response has been to engage, not in a superficial way, but in a deep and detailed manner. We've started uh, with the United States, We've continued with the Europeans, and we have continued uh, with the United Kingdom. These engagements are first and foremost at the political level. They're also at the respective CIPs or CIU units level, and they're also at the broader industry, financial sector, country, and regional level. So who are the respective stakeholders that have been engaging. In the case of the OECS, starting with our central bank, our prime ministers, our ministers of finance, our heads and CEOs of our respective CIP units. We have engaged with the Treasury Department of the United States. We've engaged with the Home Office of the UK, as well as the visa sections, We've engaged with uh, the respective European commissioners responsible for immigration, responsible for security. And what have been the discussions about? I'd be honest, in the case of Grenada, for example, the fact that uh, Grenada would have been processing Russian applications when I assumed office, and that we continue doing so until we agreed in St. Kitts with the Americans and the rest of our colleagues that we would not do so. And what are the risks associated, particularly for development partners with that issue? So we've shared and we've allowed them to see the extent of our due diligence, both the extensive and the intensive nature of it, the breadth, the scope. And we've said to them, we are happy to be transparent, to share and to show you how we go about our due diligence process. And that should you have any concerns with those that we are happy to address this. And the dialogue is ongoing. Uh, we do not intend to retreat. We do not intend to avoid. We intend to engage. We intend to speak. We intend to discuss. And we intend to find solutions that are mutually acceptable to our partners and to ourselves. And the question is why? We believe that all of our development partners have come to accept that the programs play a significant role in attracting direct foreign investment to the region, which otherwise would not be available. And I don't want to say this in a flippant manner. I can use Grenada as an example. Outside of one single hotel that has been built in the last 25 years, every major tourism development in the hotel space in Grenada has been funded via a CBI program. So I want you to understand the context of what I've just said. With the exception of one major hotel, all of the other hotel properties have been funded through the CBI program. So you could therefore imagine Grenada without the hotels that have been funded through the CDI program. We all know what the ravages of COVID-19 did to the tourism industry. And we should appreciate that the Caribbean is one of the most heavily tourist dependent geographic spaces worldwide. 
so with no tourism in Barbados, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Kitts, Antigua, these islands' economy grown to a complete halt. With no economic activity and with the added burden of having to treat with large cross sections of your population that are unemployed, not working, and that still have to meet the burdens of the excessive or rigorous sanitization and health issues you need to deal with, governments had to find revenue to address those. And to a large extent, in all of the islands with investment migration industries, it is because of the investment migration that they were able to cope, to survive, and to be resilient. Many of the islands are still recovering from the challenges of COVID-19. Without the buffer provided by the investment migration revenues, I shudder to think of the catastrophic consequences that many of these islands would still be laboring on. So we believe genuinely that our development partners understand and appreciate the importance of the programs to the region. And so we are quite genuine, genuine in our desire to address any security concerns that they may have, particularly the concerns that persons with passports from our region may attempt to avoid uh, the visa regimes that exist in the UK, in the EU. We are confident that with working with our development partners, uh, that we will be able to address any of the concerns they have. And I'll give an example, and I think we can accept that in some instances, our due diligence processes are actually far more extensive and far more involved than what one may ordinarily require to acquire a Schengen or UK visa. But we also acknowledge that there may be requirements that they have uh, that we have not yet introduced in our due diligence processes. We are quite happy to hear what those are and to incorporate them. We are quite happy to address uh, further use of biometrics in our due diligence process. So that's just an insight into the kind of conversations that we've been having with our development partners so that we can assure them uh, that their security is our security. One of the concerns with the developing partners in Grenada's case, PM Mitchell says, had to do with the processing of Russian applications when he assumed office in 2022, which the country seized after an agreement was reached during a meeting in St. Kitts. We've begun to take steps to address this issue as well. We first started with the Americans by ensuring that all six of the CIP states signed the MOU with the Treasury Department. We have on our own recently in February signed a further memorandum of understanding. We are meeting this afternoon uh, to further operationalize uh, those aspects of the MOU that we signed. As you are aware, we've given ourselves a June timeline by which to commence the implementation uh, of the various aspects of the MOU that we've agreed to. And we intend to meet that timeline. And I say this because we do not want to have bad actors exploiting any inconsistencies that may exist when it comes to our regional approach to protecting, safeguarding, and making more resilient and sustainable uh, the investment migration space within the region. So the discussions will continue in earnest within the region so that we can present to our citizens so that we can present uh, to our development partners uh, our united approach to ensuring that we continue to raise the standards, to ensuring that we continue to share information amongst ourselves with our partners to sustain this industry. Transparency. There's a sense oftentimes that the funds generated from CIP programs do not reach the intended targets. I say there's a sense. Whether that is in fact the case is probably debatable.
But I can take Grenada as an example. Uh, we are extremely transparent and publish openly the receipts associated with our CBI program. Prime Minister Mitchell added that a major positive of the Grenada CBI program is the rigorous process that applicants must go through once an application has been received. Particularly the concerns that persons with passports from our region may attempt to avoid uh, the visa regimes that exist in the UK, in the EU. We are confident that with working with our development partners, uh, that we will be able to address any of the concerns they have. And I'll give an example, and I think we can accept that in some instances, our due diligence processes are actually far more extensive and far more involved than what one may ordinarily require to acquire a Schengen or UK visa. But we also acknowledge that there may be requirements that they have uh, that we have not yet introduced in our due diligence processes. He says the five countries involved in the program are eager to address security concerns that development partners may have about the process.